Okay, so our Active Directory, sorry, Azure Active Directory domain service is provisioned. And as you can see, itsense.net is running. And let's view some health, synchronization, blah, blah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Replica sets. And it has created two domain controllers, 10.01.4 and 10.01.5. They are currently running. And so what I need to do before we do anything else, anyway, this is just a history of it, right? Perfect. So what I, what we need to do, we know these are the domain controllers, right? And we know, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, that I will provision a couple of VMs, server VMs, for remote administration of uh, one purpose will be the, the remote administration of Active Directory domain services, because as you can see, there is no console as such to administer it. So I will install, I will provision one server and add it to Active Directory domain services, install remote service administrative tools so that we can manage this domain, right? And maybe I would like to use that server for some application server or file server or whatever but first thing first what we need to do as those servers which i will a server or other vms which i will provision will sit in vnet infra and will join azure active directory domain services means they needs to point to write dns right so that they can locate itsense.net domain controllers which are these so these are my domain controller slash dns servers and what i want i want to change the properties of my vnet so that any vm that runs in this vnet will use these servers as dns servers so that they can locate itsense.net domain controllers and I, I can easily join them. So I'll go to virtual network and vnet infra and I will go to DNS servers, custom and 10.0.1.4 and 10.0.1.5 Kavish and done just to confirm that I have added the right servers ten dot zero dot one dot four ten dot zero dot one dot five and ta -da -da. Ta -da -da -da. zero one to four zero one to five perfect okay now we are ready to provision a vm in azure and what i will do i will provision a server and i will join azure active directory domain services it will create its computer account in this Azure AD domain services, okay? So let's go to virtual machine, right? And let's add a VM. I can add it to ADDS because it's all related. In production, you may like to create a separate resource group for every resource, most likely. So server one is okay. Australia East is fine. I don't want infrast any redundancy infrastructure level. I'll choose 2016 data center Gen 1. Standard V2S is okay, fin okay with me. Two vCPUs, 4 GB. A local admin account. And, 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 okay, for the time being, I would like 
to have a public IP with RTP3389. I may later change it to Bastion service. And I will leave the default. I don't have any licenses. Uh, so next. And instead of premium SSD, I might go for standard SSD, which is fine. I would like to add one more disk of standard type. And I would say maybe 128 gig is enough. Just for testing environment. Okay, all standard SSDs. And next, again, I want this VM into VNet Infra and the same subnet as well. I want a public IP and I want basic NSG with allowing RDP3889 temporarily because right nothing there no load balancing at the moment everything is okay for default here and no extra extensions I want to add at the moment otherwise if, if you want you can just add all those extensions if it requires some antivirus some monitoring stuff now I'm okay with it so I don't need this at this moment and next for tagging no tags review and create and currently it's validating and yes it's giving me a warning that RDP port is open to internet and I know that and let's say create and now it's provisioning a VM for me server 2016 okay so we have configured Azure Active Directory domain services um, now we have provisioned a VM. I mean, it's pro under provisioning at the moment. Uh, I have on-prem AD. It is getting synced to Azure Active Directory using Azure AD Connect. There is one more important point which I mentioned during, in, an, in, an, in an introduction video. Is that? Let me just show you real quick over here. I will show you. Uh, on Azure AD Connect server as well, but just to make it quick, if you go to Azure, if you are using Azure Active Directory domain services, right, and you have a similar sort of environment that you are using Azure AD Connect to sync on-prem AD to Azure Active Directory, then make sure that you configure Azure Active Directory domain services password hash synchronization. You might say, oh, password hash synchronization is already working because Azure AD Connect is installed and configured with on-prem AD and syncing my users and groups or what else to Azure AD. Yes, it is syncing. We do know that. However, there is one special requirement if you want to use Azure Active Directory domain services. Okay. Azure Active Directory domain services need also NTLM and Kerberos password hashes. By default, Azure AD Connect don't sync NTLM and Kerberos password hashes. It sync password hashes. It's just that is totally different than Kerberos and NTLM password hashes, okay? And that's what it's, this article is explaining. And that's what, see, Azure AD Connect can be configured to synchronize the required NTLM or Kerberos password hashes for Azure AD DS. So what you need to do for that First of all, you need to enable that functionality on your Azure AD Connect server. 
And for that purpose, what you need to do, first of all, this is a PowerShell script. All you have to do, just copy it, right? And then on your Azure AAD Connect server, open the Azure AAD Connect, go to Connectors tab, see the name of those connectors, and replace this name or this this value case sensitive azure ad connector name with the name of azure ad connect azure active directory uh, connector type and the second one is replace it with the name of active directory connector type which is a domain service which is your on prem right so once you do that and execute this script it will enable the sync of right in your in your on prem ad to synchronize and uh, it will enable this feature in your on prem ad and allow azure ad connect to synchronize on prem account and tlm and kerberos password hashes okay so so <coughs> sorry your on prem accounts and tlm and kerberos password hashes will get synced to azure ad one more important point in order for this to work there is a gotcha that it starts working with a password change means a user password change is required so when my user account password will change then the new um, then then the new password hash in terms of ntlm and kerberos will get synced otherwise you will do this step and you will keep waiting and say oh what happened script get executed but still it's not working i can't join any computer to domain because your password will not get synced because as i said azure active directory domain services requires ntlm and kerberos password hashes and that will come into effect or come into the seeking effect after executing the script when when you will reset or change the password of your user same thing you need to do for your Azure Active Directory cloud-based user as well, like I have here, these two cloud-based users, right? You can see, I need to change their password so, so that it can get synced. So let me change anyway to AD admin password. Mm-hmm. And reset the password for this guy and okay I reset the AD admin password same thing you need to do for your cloud users of course from on-prem so I'll show you how to do that um, I actually I have already explained it to you but just I may show you on Azure AD Connect Server, okay? So I will see you on that box.